Good evening to everyone. My name is Mario Lafontaine. I'm director of Seismic Technologies of Renalagos Engineering. And first of all, I need to apologize to you all because uh, I will need to stop every now and then to clean up my nose because I, I got a cold after the long journey from Chile. I will start briefly uh, with a very short introduction of our firm. Renalagos Engineers is an international structural engineering firm founded in the year 1977. Currently, our head offices are located in Chile, and we have presence in Peru, United States, Ecuador, China, and the United Arab Emirates. Our great greatest projects are the Costanera Center Tower. This is located in Santiago, the capital of Chile. This is a high seismic uh, zone. And this is a 300 tall meter uh, building and it's currently the tallest building in Latin America. Before the Costanera Tower, uh, the Telefonica Tower hold that record in Chile with 143 tall, meter tall. This is also located in Santiago, the capital of Chile. And currently, we are working on the design phase of the Swiss Hotel. This is a 180-meter-tall tall building in Guayaquil, Ecuador, also a high seismicity region zone, and will become the tallest building in the Ecuador. And in Chile, we are also working on the design phase of the Atacama One thermosolar plant. This will become the tallest thermosolar plant in the world and the second tallest structure in Chile. This is located in the Atacama Desert, also a high seismicity zone. As you can see, design, seismic design of structures in high seismicity zones has been part of our life since our very beginning. And the New York Capitol Building is, is not the exception to, uh, for this. The New York Capitol Building is an office and residential building located in Santiago, Chile. You can see there in the picture uh, those two towers of 29 floors each and four underground parking levels. Uh, this is uh, founded on a relatively very stiff soil with shear wave velocity from 500 to 900 meters per second and has 90 meters tall. And when it is finished, it will become the tallest residential base isolated building in the Americas. This is a conjun conjunction work with Rimboro Second Associates. First of all, this building was designed in a traditional way. Traditional way sorry. This means a, a fixed base solution. Despite the fact that uh, in this configuration the building works, that means uh, accomplish all the code requirements, the owner wanted to, to put in there some seismic protection technologies to improve the performance of the building in a strong earthquake. First of all, we think in, in damper system because we thought that isolation system wouldn't work in such a tall tower. Uh, and when, when we realized the studies, the damping system showed that it was not a, a cost-effective solution. So uh, we then tried to, to, to make the studies to see what happened with the seismic isolation. And the first choice we had to make was where to put this seismic isolation. The first option was to put it in the street level, as you can see there in the left picture. But in that case, the two towers were too slender, and we obtained some tension forces on the isolator. And also, almost one story was lost due to the thickness of the whole system. Another option was to, to put the isolation system on the base of the building, but it was too expensive because too many devices were required to cover the, the whole area. So finally, we came to a mixed solution, uh, and it consists of uh, uh, isolate the two residential towers and the projection of them into the underground parking levels. You can see there in the upper right corner the typical floor layout. It consists of an eccentrically core wall bearing system and a perimetral framing system with some L-shaped uh, columns in the corner to improve the torsional stiffness. Also, the, the two towers were connected together in the underground levels by the slab 
to improve the lateral stability and to reduce the, the slenderness of the whole system. Also, you can see there in the bottom right corner the typical underground layout and the isolators, uh, 24 different isolators, 60 of, of them a uh, lead rubber isolator and eight of them only rubber isolator put it, uh, below the core. And below those uh, isolators, a two meter thick slab was uh, cast to improve the contribution of the external isolator to resist the overturning moment. The Chilean code for se seismic isolation is almost identical to the American code, with some very minor exception. For example, the reduction factors to account for the additional damping are some, some, some different. And also, there is a limit, a minimum vertical frequency for the isolated structure of 10 hertz. And this, this one is very important, as you will tell later. The minimum design base, base shear is not permitted to be less than 5% of the seismic weight of the building. Also, a site-specific hazard analysis Analysis is required if the period of the structure is greater than three seconds, and of course, this was the case. So this analysis was done. I won't go too deep into this, because it's not the area of my specialization, but in the paper, you can find more information about the specific spectra and how it was obtained. All I want you to see there is that the specific demand was a 1.5 times larger than the encode demand. And that's a, that's a lot. The, we use two different kinds of structural analysis for each part of the building. First, for the isolation building, oh, for, sorry, for the isolation system, we made a nonlinear dynamic uh, analysis with seven pairs of records compatible with the spectra I just showed you in the the past slide. And this was made for the maximum considered earthquake level and a conservative self-imposed criteria was that no tension forces were allowed on the isolators. This is not required by code. This is a, a self-imposed uh, design criteria. And then after we, we had the isolation system designed, we designed the superstructure analysis with a typical linear response spectrum analysis with the effective stiff, stiffness and properties of the isolation system. Here you can see uh, some output, some numbers. For example, in the bottom left uh, corner, you can see in the red bars the maximum compression forces and the, in the blue bars, the minimum compression forces. As you can see there, no tension forces were obtained. Also, the, the maximum compression forces were about 40,000 kilonewton. That's a lot. And I it was very complicated to test those isolators because no lab in Chile has the capacity to put some that, that big uh, vertical load. Also, the, the geometric properties of each isolator is shown there in the table, where the smallest isolator, the tape A, is, has a di diameter of a little more than 1.1 meter, and the type C, the, that's the biggest one, uh, a diameter of 1.55 meter. Also, the displacement demand are shown there in, in the figure. For the design basis earthquake, it is the displacement demand in the center of, of mass is of 250 millimeters. And for the maximum considered earthquake, the displacement demand in the center of mass was of, of 288 millimeters. And the total maximum displacement for the maximum considered earthquake in, the, in a corner was about 321 millimeters. To avoid collision with the surrounded underground levels that were not isolated, we put there a gap of uh, 500 millimeters thick. The damping of the isolation system was 28% uh, for the design basis earthquake and 24% for the maximum considered earthquake. 
but because of the flexibility of the superstructure, those numbers go uh, a little lower, um, and the combined system damping for the design basis earthquake finally was 25%, and the combined, combined system damping of the, for the maximum considered earthquake was 20%. Uh, in that table, you can see also the periods of the isolated structure is for, uh, for the two translational directions are greater than five seconds. That's uh, almost two times the fixed base isolation, sorry, the fixed base periods that were something like 2.5 seconds. And the vertical frequency of the isolation system is, is uh, 10.1 hertz. In fact, that uh, frequency was the, what controlled the, the design of the isolation system. The backlink capacities of the isolators were two to three times greater than needed. I don't want you to bore with, with numbers, but all I, I, I want you to see in that table is that the elastic base shear demand for the towers is for the two direction, something like 13,000 kilonewton. And the minimum design base your demands is 20,000. So instead of using a reduction factor of two, as the code uh, allows us to do, we had to use a reduction factor of less than one, in fact, 0 0.66 for one direction and 0 0.68 for the other direction to accomplish that minimum base uh, design here. I know that doesn't have any physical sense. It's just a, a code requirement that we had to accomplish. I'm, I'm sure you uh, all here have sometimes uh, asked or have some problem like this before. Um, well, the, the structure was then designed by, with forces greater than the elastic demand. And the problem with this is that we had to control the interstory drifts to be less than 0 0.25 percent. That's a very short number, but it is because in Chile the drifts are measured at the reduction force level. There is no need to multiply it by C sub D or other factors. So the new challenge was to stiffen the building. And uh, how can we stiff the building? The first alternative is to put some additional structure. But you can see there in the architectural plan, there is no place to additional structure. It, has, it is a very tight architectural. The other option was to increase the size of the existing structure. But this was also discarded for the same reason. There was no, spa no space. Uh, the way we we came to a solution to that drift problem was to put an outrigger in the upper uh, level. That is a non-optimal level, we all know it, but it was good enough to stiffen the structure and to put the interstory drift just below the code limit, as you can see there in the chart. Here you can see the structural response uh, reduction for the drifts for the dynamic analysis, nonlinear dynamic analysis, uh, you can see a reduction of, of about 80% for the base isolated building. The same for the, for the maximum absolute accelerations. In fact, a little more, 83 to 86%. Now, if we talk about sustainability, I think we all here can agree that that structure with seismic protection technologies are more sustainable than the ones who doesn't have any kind of uh, protection technologies. Why is that? Because if you put uh, seismic protection technologies, a damper or a base isolation, isolation system, you will ex expect less structural damage, less non-structural damage, more content protection, and by that way, you will have a, a, a loss of, uh, or less, sorry, uh, economical losses after a strong earthquake. In fact, in Chile, 
The problem in the 2010 earthquake was not the structural damage. Very few buildings have that kind of damage. I think you all know which ones. But the problem was the non-structural and content damage. You can see there a picture where no structural damage was shown, but the non-structural losses there are huge. So in fact, in, in that earthquake, the losses due to non-structural damage ascend to 30 billion US dollars. That is the 14% uh, of the GDP of the country. And that's a lot, and it opens a way for the seismic protection technologies, and in particular, the isolation technologies to improve this. In fact, we are trying by this project to encourage the use of isolation techniques in tall buildings. Uh, I know it's not uh, feasible to do this in super tall buildings, in skyscrapers, but I think uh, in buildings like this, in high seismicity areas like Santiago, you can really achieve uh, good results. The conclusions. Uh, this work has demonstrated the feasibility of using a seismic isolation in a high-rise high building in Chile. The main challenge of this included the develop, developing of a seismic hazard analysis using large diameter isolator with very large uh, compression forces and to to test this uh, isolator in a lab. Achieve in the same way a high vertical and a low lateral stiffness, and controlling the superstory interstory drift due to that code problem. The use of sism uh, sism uh, seismic isolation in this case was, uh, was possible due to the, the good soil and, and in this case, the reduction were for of almost 80%, 77 to 86%. That's a lot of reduction, and that's all. Thank you.